Hello and welcome my friends to the Flying Kick, I am Savino as always and today we will take a quick look at the upcoming demo of Night Slashers Remake. The demo is set to be released on June 10th on the Steam Next Fest and it offers two playable characters in the two first levels of the game. Night Slashers Remake is being developed by Storm Trident and published by Forever Entertainment, who kindly sent me the demo earlier. The full game is set to be released sometime this year, but still no date has been confirmed by the developer. What also has not been confirmed yet is the physical release, so as far as we know, the game will be digital only, at least at launch. But enough with the technicalities and let's talk about the game. Well, if you played the original game from 1993, you'll be interested to know that this is basically the same game. Enemies, their placement on levels, items, bosses, everything comes directly from the original, but with improved graphics, soundtrack and better controls. And yeah, without further ado, I will address the pink flying elephant in the room, also known as the graphics. It's not hard to find around the web people complaining about the graphics since the game was revealed. On the game's discussion page on Steam, there are two topics, one above the other, complaining about it, and the comments on YouTube and Twitter about it are not the best. But let me play devil's advocate here and say that you are all wrong. Actually, the game looks very pretty when you have the chance to see it in action. The characters are well made, being very faithful to the original game, the, their colors are vibrant and they really pop against the dark and broken backgrounds. The enemies are also pretty cool and, again, faithful to their original rendition, but here you can see in glorious HD detail their guts flailing around, their acid vomit flying at your face, and how they melt into a puddle of blood when you beat them. Yeah, the blood is a little bit more tamed than what I was expecting, especially come from the same guys who created Skinny and Franco, but no one can complain about the lack of blood and guts here. There are also some cool effects like dynamic lights and reflections on puddles that look awesome, and the puddles will react to movement, becoming more agitated as you walk over them. Pretty good stuff, if you ask me. But at the same time, the graphics are way too clean for this kind of game, the characters and even the enemies look so fresh and new and not like something dirty and abandoned as you would expect in a zombie apocalypse. It lacks that gritness that comes so naturally with pixel art and it really makes the difference here. I mean, look at this guy's shirt and pants, they are completely clean, looking brand new for someone who is basically rotten. This guy with the knife too, he has a huge wound on his side and not a single drop of blood is tainting his fresh and clean body. I think most people around who are complaining about the graphics are bothered by this weird feeling of seeing everything so clean in a game that should look way more dirty and greedy. I could be wrong, obviously, but I was on this bandwagon too and immediately changed my mind about the graphics in general after seeing the game in person. Now, while the graphics may not be that important, animation undoubtedly is and we have a few problems here. Some of the animations, as you can see, are pretty good, your character's walk cycle is great and the zombies look awesome, all shambling in your direction, but unfortunately, when you start to attack, things start to look pretty weird. There are a ton of missing frames here that make everything look pretty janky. Look at this kick from Christopher, he simply jumps from one position to another without any intermediary frame to smooth things out. And you can find this lack of frames in a lot of enemies' moves, when they jump they seem to have no momentum, it feels weightless if you know what I mean. When you grab your enemy, things also look a bit wonky with the enemy always in positions that they shouldn't be, it's, it's weird. Take a look at this frame by frame footage. It may look like I'm nitpicking, but actually I think these wonky animations have a lot to do with people not liking the graphics. If things were a bit smoother, I believe the overall presentation would be a lot better. 
But yeah, I talked too much about the graphics already and this video was supposed to be short, so let's talk about the audio a bit and close with the gameplay. If you enjoyed Night Slasher's OST and why you wouldn't, you will be glad to know that the soundtrack is here, both the new and the old versions. You can select the one you want to listen to in the game's option menu, so there will be no complaints about this. The new tracks are pretty good, the samples are louder and clearer, and while not every music is a one-to-one -one copy of the original, they kept the same vibe and are pretty good to listen in and outside the game. The characters also had their voices revamped with new voice actors and way better samples. The voices are nice, nothing that adds or subtracts from the game, but I'm glad they are here. Now let's talk about the gameplay and combat because there's a lot to talk about. If you played Night Slashers before, well, you'll be right at home because, as I said, everything here is just like the original, including your moves. If you never played Night Slashers, this is your typical brawler from the early 90s. You have a button to attack, a jump, and a special button that will consume a lot of your health. There are no combos, no juggles, nothing that you are used to seeing in modern games because, well, these things weren't common in beaten ups when this game was first released. In the original, the combat was simple but solid. You had Christopher, the all around character, Hong Hua, the fast and weak girl, and Jake, the strong and slow one. A pretty common selection, even for the time, but the characters were interesting enough and it worked. In this demo, you will be able to play with Chris and Hong in the first two levels of the game, which will last you around 7 to 10 minutes. Unfortunately, the combat here does not feel as solid as the original one. Aside from the lack of frames hurting the animation and the overall flow of the game, you will find a ton of glitches happening everywhere. First of all, your enemies feel… soft? I, I, I don't know if this was intentional, after all, they are bags of rotten flesh without too much will, but they literally move back and forth when you hit them in a way that I don't think feels satisfying enough. You can see here in this footage how much they swing every time you hit them, and at least in my opinion, it is a bit too much. They don't need to move forward, I think. And of course, you can stun lock your enemies with ease and kill them by repeating the same move. The bosses at least can escape from that thanks to some iframes they can get while being beaten, but the problem here is they can get these iframes at any moment, not only when they get up or are being stun locked, sometimes they will simply enter in this iframe state and hit you mid combo. Your enemies also had the bad habit of hitting you off screen with projectiles and aerial attacks, and you can do anything to save your skin. There are some hitboxes problems here too, with your moves being capable of hitting enemies behind you or hitting enemies way after the animation is over. The second boss is also completely bugged, hitting himself when jumping, hitting you after his animation is over, and even being able to be hit during his iframes, it's pretty messy. And for a monster made out of rocks, he feels pretty light. Finally, let's talk about the AI, which is currently kind of broken. Enemies will wander around the screen ignoring you or will stay in one place doing nothing while you beat other enemies, not to mention that they will only align in front of you instead of trying to surround you or getting you from behind. Yeah, yeah, they are zombies, but that's not an excuse for poor AI. Now, there are good things here, the control feels great and responsive, I enjoy the graphics although they could use a good coat of dirt, and the soundtrack is fire, they just need to fix some aspects of the combat like the enemy's reaction and iron out some glitches and this can become a very solid game. I hope the developers still have time to fix these problems because I really want this game to be good. The game also offers some extras like the music room where you can hear both versions of the OST and some filters to make everything look more old school. I'm not a huge fan of filters, I honestly would rather have a button to change from the remake to the original game, but I'm glad they took the time to add these features.
And that's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick preview of the demo. You all can try this demo on June 10th, and I hope you all download it and see for yourself and form your own opinion. And sure, don't forget to come back here or jump at my Discord group, link in the description, so we can talk about the game. Other than that, I hope you all have an awesome day, and remember, keep it up.